Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Grenkel. I've been now with Adventure for two and a half years. Uh, this handsome devil to my right is Ryan. Been here for how long? You've been here now, like four months. So, what we want to talk to you guys about is basically almost the state of PPC reporting and what we think is really wrong with it and how we are looking to fix it. Quick rundown of what we're going to talk about. I'm just going to go through a quick exercise and kind of just explain like what our thought process is and how we could kind of maybe get down to really driving insights. What's wrong? What's wrong with PPC reporting? What's an insight? Im implementing business intelligence in your reports, and then we'll do a couple of case studies pending if uh, the demo will work. But so quick exercise to start. Uh, situation right now. You're an account manager and you're looking to essentially optimize and improve performance. We open an ads account with prior month's data and now you're like, what do I do? So I open up an account and this is what I look at. It's messy, it's table, a lot of numbers, a lot of percent changes. Where do my eyes go? What do I do? It's really, really confusing. One th other thing about this is this isn't the entire business itself. What if you're advertising on Facebook? What if you're advertising on Bing? You're doing other platforms maybe, like Spotify. Like This is only one part of a business, and it doesn't give us a full overview of how you want to tell a story, and maybe what exactly what's going on in the account. So then we go one more step further now. Now we open up our, a dashboard per se. All right, it's a little more visual. We can understand what's going on a little bit better now. I can see the trends over the last 30 days exactly and what's happening. but. Now we want to be like, all right, we want to go one step further now. Like, why are these trends happening? Why are these numbers doing what they're doing? What's exactly happening here? So then we go maybe one step further, and now we say, oh, wow. Now we can identify and pinpoint the exact things going on. I open up this account, and I'm looking now at AMG Search Broad. I can look at the cost this past 30 days, $36,000, up 500%. I can see exactly now where that spend actually even went at the ad group level, broad reach. So now we have a why, but a lot of the things that I want to talk about exactly is why, when you do it. Why, why did things change? Why, are, why is revenue up? Why is CPA going down? Like A big question is why, and why does basically reporting that a lot of people get, we don't think is great at the end of the day. So let Ryan speak on that. Yeah. <clears throat> From what Greg just walked us through there, it shows the uncapped capabilities of what PPC and reporting can really be. But to start, we've got to answer the question, what's wrong with the current state of reporting now? So to answer this, we have three ways. The first, it's backward looking. It's outdated. The line graphs, the bar graphs, the pie graphs that we're using are not helping us tell a story. It's not helping us derive an insight, which brings us to our second point. We're focused too much on the what. We're not focused on the why. We're focused on what happened rather than why it happened. We're not finding st statistical significance. We're not having next steps. Because of this, account managers think as reported as an afterthought for PPC. The way we use reporting now and dashboards are used just to check a box. They're used just to show that work's going on in the account. So why do we find this useful if we're not being able to derive insights from this? Which brings us to our third and last point. It's simply just not useful. We've created beautiful, customizable, innovative dashboards and made countless changes and tweaks to it over the years. But account managers and even clients just simply have not found the use for it. And that's what we just assumed was going to be the case. Until now, until the way that we figured this out on how to make these more useful, and we do this, by an insight. We found the why behind the what. We are now focused on why is this happening instead of what is happening. So we've thrown this term insight around a couple of times today. I know Marvin mentioned it earlier. Now we're bringing it back up. And what we mean when we talk about an insight within PPC is that an insight has to convey new, in new information. It has to be relevant. It has to be non-trivial. An insight has to be more than just an observation. Saying that the trend is going up that's only answering the what. It's not answering the why it happened. And a good quote that really sticks out by Mike Grigsby in his book, Marketing Analytics, that helps us understand really the importance of an insight and what an insight is, is an insight must focus on the understanding of consumer behavior. An insight has to quantify causality. An insight has to provide a competitive advantage. It's a piece of intelligence your competitors do not have. An insight must generate financial implications. Ultimately, an insight is about actionability. And this quote really packs a punch. 
Um, it really explains well to what an insight is and what it really does for us in our dashboards. And a way that we kind of break it down is through an acronym called CRAG. So hopefully by looking at the image on screen, it brings back some memories from an early 90s TV show called Nickelodeon Guts. Um, and they had an event called the CRAG, which we can see on screen. And we broke it down as an, into an acronym. The C stands for causality. How does the change in one, in one variable affect the change in another? So Tyler Newton has presented earlier. How does the change in a keyword from broad match, how does that affect the cost per click? How does it affect the conversion rate and so on? The R is relevant. How reliable and how significant is the data? The A is actionable. Are the account managers and the marketing team, are they able to find insights and take clear next actions from what we provide within the dashboards? And lastly, G, it has to be goal-oriented. It has to have a purpose and solve a problem for what we're looking for. And if this acronym doesn't stick out enough to remember, the trophy that you won from Nickelodeon Guts and the Crag is shaped like an area chart or a graph. So hopefully that makes it stick even more. So now we want to move on to the next step of this. And we want to talk about how implementing business intelligence in your report, in your reporting. So start off here, what the hell does business intelligence even mean? What is this buzzword now in 2022 that everyone's saying, everyone's using? But at the end of the day, what does it mean? So I'm gonna give you a really complex definition, of course, of what it means. So business intelligence is, combines business analytics, data mining, data visualization, data tools and infrastructure, and best practices to help organizations make more data-driven decisions. Okay, so what does that actually mean at the end of the day? Let's break it down. Business intelligence combines business analytics, your income statement, your data points involving your financials, all those kind of points that we want to implement. Your data mining, how are you pipelining all this data together? How am I taking all my Google data, my Facebook data, my Bing data, bringing it all together into one platform? Being able to then visualize that data into a platform, data visualizations, and having the tools and infrastructure to keep this going and make sure that we're able to provide you with the most intelligent reports that you can get. And we're going to sum it up basically what business intelligence is in our eyes in a few words. It's a fast and efficient way to derive an insight at the end of the day. So tying BI into PPC reporting. So this is kind of the way that we kind of look at it to start. So as you look around, we obviously have all our basically marketing platforms. We have Twitter, Bing, Pinterest, Google Ads, even our friends from like uh, Stack Adapt, Yelp are here. Um, is anyone from Facebook actually here? Do we have any Facebook people? No Facebook support? No surprise there. Anyway, um, so what we then do is we take all this data and we have a tool called Funnel. Funnel basically takes all these data connectors and be able to combine, transform, and move the data that in the way we want it. We can group it into prospecting data. Our campaigns cap prospecting, we'll know from a Google prospecting, a Facebook prospecting, what all that does. Remarketing, being able to basically now see how our prospecting and remarketing uh, channels as a whole are doing and not just from an individual platform perspective. The last part of this is obviously then the visualization. But there's one more thing that I want to show that I want to implement. To really take this to the next level, let's take your HubSpot data too now. Let's take your Spot Shopify data. Let's take your Salesforce data. Let's take everything that we can and use this to leverage it to bet better reporting at the end of the day. So for this, what does it look like? I'll hand over to Ryan again to explain that. Let's walk through an example. So we have six business units and we created a BI tool to understand the profitability and success in each business unit. From looking at this, we can see that business unit five has been the most profitable and successful. And we want to take this insight and this information from business unit five and take it back to the other business units so it can be as profitable as business unit five. So if we start drilling down and going down the funnel, first we can see the revenue, the expenses, and the orders. But this just answers what happened. We still don't know why Business Unit 5 has been successful. And if we drill down one more time, now we have our answer. We have our answer to why Business Unit 5 is so successful. And what we see is the increase in spend in Facebook compared to the other business units has led to the success of Business Unit 5. And now we can report back to the account management team. We can report back to the marketing team and give them these insights so they can go through the other the other business units and make the necessary changes to the budgets. And we did this all in a matter of five seconds. 
So now we want to dive into tiers of reporting. What do, what do we look at in tiers of reporting? So we, we see reporting almost in three tiers. Tier one will be like a basic report. Tier two combines a lot of your marketing and your personal data. Tier three is basically an all out BI, everything from your business perspective into one place. So to start off, we look at something like tier one. When you look at something like this, it's a very basic report. It gives you what you want. But why do you, what are you, why are these things happening? It doesn't really give an example. What we, do, we try to really say is like, yeah, our cost per conversion is 950. We spent her almost $30,000. We got 3,000 conversions. I can see what it looks like over time, but like, why, why do these things happen is a tough answer to get when we look at possibly a tier one report. Moving on to something now like a tier two report. This is a, a little bit different, but now when I look at something like this, what this is basically is a budget pacing report. With one of our clients, they have multiple brands, which I understand is pretty hard to see, but bear with me here. Um, they have multiple brands that need to pace at a certain point per month. As we can see from the top one, we have an overall budget pacing per month. How are you pacing to your month? Your spend pacing month to date. How are you pacing compared to that budget pacing at this point in time? And spend pacing month to date. So we spend 30% of our days in the month so far, do we spend 30% of our budget? We're able to now kind of identify quickly where are, we, where are we overpacing? Where are we underpacing this month? Where do we need to maybe take our focus? And even if we're now overpacing, we can go to the next step of this report and see where we're kind of overpacing. We can see the total spend for the month. Did, it, did we spend an overspend in PPC, LSA? We go down the line on the tables right there, like was it an industry that we maybe overspend in? We'll be able to derive these points at the snap of a finger now, rather than bouncing around so much between all these different platforms and be able to go now to the brand managers per se for this account and be like, hey, I see that we may be overspent in PPC. Maybe we should dial it back here for the next half of the month. These are the type of insights we want to go. And then we take it to the last report where it's a tier three visualization. It's basically an all out report with your entire business business analytics, your paid data kind of brought into one place. So with this, something like this, we can always see like your client data, your top 10 clients by revenue, your bottom five clients, 10 client, clients by revenue, your top 10 states, your bottom 10 states. We can go to the zip code data that we're able to get from all these different data points, from Google, from all the geolocation data, from what they're able to collect in their CRMs even. We can then merge and put this stuff together on a report that gives you everything you need in one stop now. And that's what we're aiming for at the end of the day. So to start wrapping this up, we want to do a couple case studies and reports. Hopefully this demo kind of works when we do it right now, but we'll see what happens. So basically we're going to do a couple examples. So these are examples that actually have happened. So let's prepare for a client meeting. Where will we be discussing the data from last month's performance? We want an overall report on performance, explaining what led to good performance, highlight the good, highlight the bad, and then discuss what we can start doing in the next coming weeks. So I go to this. And all right, so sorry it wasn't gonna work, but in in the little corner that I got it, I was gonna walk through basically a, a report of what we kind of had, leading to like all the cost data, being able to identify all the different costs associated, what it looked like over time, and then kind of dive into more of like the what the campaign's perspective looked like, how you could see we, where we overspend, what accounts did we overspend in, ETC. Um, but I guess right now it's a little hard right now to see, but I'm sorry. But that's the idea of like the questions we want to answer and the reports that at the end of the day we wanted to share with you guys really and talk about a little bit more. So, but that's like one example. Another example of a questions that we got and we could answer, and this is stuff that I, like I said, I wish I could really just dive in and give you the answers, but a client is curious about performance in a certain market. Our client, a used car lead gen company, was curious about changes in CPAs and what could be leading the cause for these cities with rising CPAs. We currently advertise between Facebook and Google. Can you find the cause of, a cause of the delta in CPA? So we were able to create a report for this client specifically, taking all the different locations that they, they market in. Houston, LA, New York, Miami, um, Detroit, just to name a few. And right away, we, we were able to see with color coordination, if, like I said, if I could say this, we're able to see those markets that are maybe the CPA rows, dive into those reports then, see like exactly what does that entail? Like, did we spend more on Facebook? Did we spend more on Google? What's the change, what changed and why did these changes occur? Are the questions that we wanted to give the client's answer to at the end of the day. So to wrap things up, that was a lot of information. Now what? The times have changed so much 
in 10 years, heck, even five, heck, even two years. Everything has changed where the reports like this and the kind of information that you can gather was so hard to get. It was for big companies, big enterprises with big data science teams that were able to kind of do this. Now, it all has changed. There are so many good tools out there that help you do this, like what we have with Funnel, Supermetrics, just to name a few tools that I've come across over time and seen, and they've been really good. And not only are they good, they're cost effective. Any kind of new Shopify owner can now get these tools as well and use it. And like what we do starting to do now is we want to give people that kind of freedom. We want to give you the power to own your, own your data, be able to see your data, and make data-driven decisions off that. We want to get people from what maybe a what report to a why report at the end of the day, getting your tier three report, building a pipeline with all your marketing channels, creating reports and analysis, things that we'd like to do and we'd like to help you with down the road. And that kind of sums up everything. Uh, thank you guys, really do appreciate it.